This Smash Brothers crowd cheer theory might hint to the next fighter. Let's talk all about this. What's happening, my blocked buddies, and welcome to a brand new episode of Blocked Content's Leak Speak. My name is Callum, and this is going to be your blocked content for today. It's so strange that every single week we seem to be getting theories that are getting more and more detailed, which is really cool. A lot of people are very eagle eyed with this Smash Brothers Ultimate information in terms of like tweets or, you know, even inside of the game's information or websites or different codes. And today is no different. We get to detail something called crowd cheer theory and this is actually something that doesn't really predict a specific character but actually predicts an entire situation right something that we can actually point to a couple of characters that might not get into smash brothers ultimate so of course super smash brothers ultimate's fighter pass volume 2 is now in full swing we're already four characters in and it makes sense that we are going to be finding out who the next fighter is around e3 time which is next month so that's very exciting. So crowd cheer theory is something that, well, people have been coming up to me about, you know, talk about this theory because it is something that's very interesting and might actually predict the next fighter. So what's interesting about this is that it actually also coincides with some other people making other claims and other predictions, which makes this entire situation, the entire rumor here, a lot more believable. So with these theories, it always kind of happens, right? People come with an idea. This idea essentially just is a couple of facts bundled together, and that can ultimately kind of shine and kind of light the way to who the next fighter is. So if you have any questions to this show, to Blocked Content, please send in an email to Question Blocked, and I will check all your emails, do that on the daily, and send them in to BlockedContentMail at gmail.com, and I will answer your questions here live on the show. And also, something amazing, we have this brand new, brand spanking new, awesome Blocked Content Discord, and the cool part about this is it's all blocked content fans you know sending in a lot of cool fan art or talking about their favorite video games or just having fun speculating about smash brothers and leaks so the link is in the description go there right now and become a part of our blocked content discord family okay so let's talk all about this crowd cheer theory right there's a lot to get into and i have my thoughts on this so yeah stay tuned dexerto.com actually reports originally posted by michael guilliam that new smash brothers ultimate, well, quote unquote, crowd cheer theory may reveal upcoming downloadable content fighters for the game. A new Super Smash Bros. Ultimate fighter theory is gaining popularity and may narrow down the identity of the final two DLC characters in Fighters Pass Volume 2. As the second Fighters Pass reaches its conclusion, fans have noticed something quite intriguing about the crowd cheer voices in the game, and how there is a severe lack of international voice acting for new fighters. The theory seems to have originated on a message board earlier in May when a user remarked how the crowd cheers have been in the same language for all the Super Smash Bros. DLC fighters in the second pass. For instance, Byleth from the first pass has a completely different cheer in English, French, Spanish, and other languages, despite the character's name being the same. Epic Mickey for Smash 1.7k celebration at Mickey lowercase smash actually posts, Yo, Challenger Pack X, you probably want to see this, and then posts the originally huge post. Basically, because the crowd cheers for other languages remained the same as the English version in Fighters Pass Volume 2, it actually suggests that foreign voice actors have not returned for this Fighters Pass. As such, any character that may potentially say their name in different languages are off the table. Quote, they effectively only kept the English version, the user wrote. What does it mean? that if your character has a name that's completely different from English to French, German, or whatever it's DLC, he is pretty much not on the roster. The big takeaway from this is that a Pokemon DLC fighter seems extremely unlikely now because of how often Pokemon say their names and how they have different names in other languages, right? And we thought a Pokemon was extremely likely, but yeah, it doesn't really seem to be that at all. 
Well, yes, this points that not stating the crowds disconfirm a character by themselves. It's the proof that they didn't hire the European voice acting teams again for Fighters Pass 2, meaning neither a Pokemon or a Sonic character can get in, the original poster added on the message board. They went on to make a point specifically about Master Chief, and how despite him having a different name in French, he could still be coming in Fighters Pass Volume 2. If it was Master Chief, I doubt they'd voice him in French, German, Italian, etc. They'd just keep his Japanese and English voice actor. The user explained how this doesn't completely rule out characters with different names. So this is potentially good news for fans of Crash Bandicoot, Master Chief from Halo, and other characters who don't already have connections to Smash in other languages. It is, however, a big blow to any character who does not have those things going for them. It's likely that Challenger Pack 10 will be revealed at E3 2021, leaving just one more fighter before Fighters Pass Volume 2 concludes in December of this year. If this theory is anything to go off, it may completely rule out a Pokemon or Sonic character, such as Dr. Eggman, from appearing. With E3 only a little while away in June, we won't have long to wait and find out if this new theory holds true. So yes, it completely makes sense to me that they don't get those voice actors back now because of course it's a worldwide situation here, everything that's going on in the world makes it very impossible for a lot of things to be happening, right? Getting a lot of people in a room to record crowd cheers is a very tough task now, right? It doesn't really make sense. So yes, the original poster of course talks about all of these different things. If you want to check out the post, it's on the screen and it's very interesting to have this type of detail in all of those different situations, right? The English, the French, the German part of Smash Brothers Ultimate, I think was always very cool. You know, I'm natively Dutch. I speak Dutch, so it's very cool that Smash Brothers actually represents that and has that in the game, which I think is incredible, right? They put in crowd cheers in different languages, the actual narrator of the game is in different languages, and I think that that's very special because in a way, you know, if you're a kid growing up, you'd probably want to have this game in your own language, right? And that really is something special. So having that not be the case for the DLC is strange and will change the way that Nintendo has to approach getting those characters. What I also think is very interesting is that of course this could sort of impact the characters, but if you look at something like Sephiroth, right, a character that only has a Japanese voice in all of the different languages, it's just the Japanese voice, right? It's almost back in the day of Smash Bros. Melee where you'd have Marth and Roy just talk in Japanese, right? They didn't have any English voice actors for those characters, not in different voices, you know, in different versions of it or anything. So I think that that's very telling, right? They can still totally go and do it that way because yeah, the characters originated from the Japanese, right? And I think that it does make sense to have certain characters just represent the language of, you know, the developers and where the game originated from. That totally makes sense. But yes, it does really put a damper on characters like Eggman and it actually makes it more possible for characters that do not share that trait to actually make it into the game. Yeah, a Pokemon really would use their own name to kind of, you know, scream and talk in all of these different languages because Pokemon is one of those franchises that is very well localized. So in every single region and all throughout Europe, Pokemon have different names. So today's comment question is, do you think that the crowd cheer theory actually makes sense, right? Is there something here? Here, do you think that it might actually be a thing? Our previous comment question winner comes to us by way of Bomberman204 saying, if I were a betting man, I guess one third party character and one first party character is the final two. A nice, even, well rounded pass, though my gut has been telling me for a while now that we'll get Chun Li and then Lloyd Irving and Yuri as the bonus fighter, but my gut has never been right when it comes to Smash. I really hope for Impa, a Zelda fighter in general, would be great to see, but Impa is by far my most wanted first party character. Don't really have a preference for first or second or 
third fighter's pass. It just comes down to the characters themselves. I do have a very minor affinity for first party fighters just because there are so many excellent characters that they seem to pass up on. For lack of a better term, meh third party choices, of course, I'm totally on board for legendary characters that happen not to be developed by the big end. Sonic, Pac-Man, Bomberman, but this whole getting a third party fighter just because it's a bigger deal is just kind of played out in my opinion. Why not empty fighters past celebrating Smash as it began, a Nintendo crossover fighter, but I'm also fine with third party fighters with rich history in the gaming juggernaut, Bomberman, Bub, Ryu, Hayabusa, some that make me think of my great times with my Nintendo consoles. And yeah, I actually do think Bomberman 204 that this makes sense, and it makes sense that you are mentioning Bomberman, right? I think characters that are third party have to be big hitting characters, not just some character from an RPG that no one really played or a character from a side game, right? Big characters from big franchises from these huge third party gets, right? Something like Steve and Sephiroth, that I think is a very cool way to look at it. Sephiroth is a villain character, but it is a character from a huge game, right? Final Fantasy VII, and now of course Final Fantasy VII Remake. It is just a big pillar of gaming, and Steve couldn't be more popular, right? Minecraft is everywhere, and Steve was, for Smash, a huge get. I actually think that Banjo-Kazooie fits that bill for a lot of, you know, older gamers that grew up with the Nintendo 64 and Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, and yeah, I think that for that audience it totally makes sense. So, I'm curious what you guys think, and well, if you want to support block content and actually decide what we make videos about next, you can actually go to patreon.com slash blocked content, and well, if you donate anything, you get to decide what our next video is about, a snake codec, leak speak that you have information on, well, let's do it all together. And also, please subscribe to block content right now, click that like button, it really helps out the channel and makes me very happy. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys around the corner where there's always more blocked content, and I'll just see ya.